made it. We made it through a very tough week, and we're here, and we're excited. I'm Carrie Champion. This is First Takes. Skip Bayless is in studio. Let's talk some football. I, it's Football Friday. What Whoa. about this? Wait, can I say something briefly? I told you this just before we went on air. I love this suit. Thank let me, you. Let's see what Stephen A. thinks about Maybe it. Maybe I got a chance today. Maybe. Stephen A. in Los Angeles. What? No tie. Extremely casual. You know I like that, that look as well. My gentlemen are bringing it. We, 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 we try, we try. Skip, Skip, the suit does look a little bit dapper. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. It's rare, but you do have your moments. <laughs> well, I, I'll bet you got good sleep last night. I didn't get much, oh. but, but I think you got good sleep. You know, you know what? You, you, know, you, you, know, you, know, you, you know what? The Steelers, the Steelers made me sick. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I got sick. I took a NyQuil. Did I mean, you really? I, 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 I've been sick all morning, but I'm feeling better okay, now. But, you good. know, I, I mean, the, the Steelers made me sick to I, my well, stomach talk about that. Well, I'll admit that. Stephen A., you're entitled to get a little extra rest. You're in Los Angeles. What time is it there? It's early. You're entitled to get a little extra rest. It's cool. I'm, listen, when the show starts, I'm here. That's, That's all roll. that matters. <laughs> Coming up on the show today, this is a private joke, folks. NFL veterans Jay Feely will join the desk for our Football Friday. He is our guest debater. What a great guy. I'm glad to have him here. Uh, plus, the NFL and its players are close to finalizing a new drug agreement we shall discuss. But first, to M&T Stadium, where the Ravens beat the Steelers 26-6. to Ravens have won five of the last seven meetings in this series, going back to 2011. Flacco, 11 of 13 for 114 yards, two touchdowns after the game. The Ravens talked about the win despite the well-known distractions. We've been through a lot together, so um, no matter what it is, I think that we're a team that tends to group together and, and come together through t tough times, and I never had a doubt that we wouldn't be able to come out here and, and go get a win tonight. The message was pretty straightforward. It was just we got a football game to play. You know, we, we, care, about, uh, we care about our families. You know, we care about the Rice family. Uh, our guys, uh, our guys do. You know, uh, it's part of our family, and we had tough si family situation um, this week. And uh, uh, I thought our guys handled it tremendously well, with class, with character, and they responded. All right. So, Stephen A. Despite uh, the Steelers clearly making you sick, uh, what was your takeaway from the game last night? Well, my takeaway from the game, give uh, the Baltimore Ravens kudos because they showed up ready to roar. It's just that simple. Obviously, they were incredibly distracted uh, with this whole Ray Rice uh, fiasco. Um, they, they, they've have their, they have their own personal feelings about it, uh, but they went out on the field and they took their frustrations or whatever feelings they may have been feeling all out on the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers were devoid of any big plays last night. No touchdowns, no sacks, no forced turnovers. I mean, they just didn't get anything done. They looked completely anemic. And, and when you look at Bernard Pierce filling in for Ray Rice, 96 yards, 22 carries, gave you a ground game. The Baltimore Ravens overall accumulated about 157 yards on the ground. They just seemed to be tougher, uh, more physical in the Steelers' face, and the Steelers seemed ill-equipped to do anything about it. You got Brown with his, fim uh, with his fumble. You got Heath Miller with his fumble. You just looked around, and then the Steelers just, they just looked completely overwhelmed and outclassed. We're not accustomed to seeing the Steelers in this fashion. Uh, they looked considerably softer than the Baltimore Ravens, and the fact that that is the case with a Pittsburgh Steelers squad is incredibly alarming because, again, it's been two years in a row that they haven't made the playoffs. Skip, you know how I feel about Mike Tomlin. Uh, you know how fond I am of him, but I'm looking at this team right now and they're just underperforming. Um, as far as I'm concerned, maybe not. I, I should take that back. It's not that they're underperforming. They don't look up to the task talent-wise, which makes me look at key, uh, GM Kevin Colbert. So I, I just don't know. But when it comes to the Ravens, they showed up ready. And, and, and in, the foot, in a game of football, more than anything else, emotions can really, really push you and propel you to another level. It's not just about skill. It's not just about game planning. All of those things are relevant. But what really stands out more than anything else is when you have that extra fervor sifting through your veins because of whatever reason and, and you allow those emotions to show up on the field. Sometimes, indeed, it does work for you. And I think in the case of the Baltimore Ravens, it worked for them last night. For Mike Tomlin's sake, I wish I could disagree with some of your points, and I can't. So I'm going to pile on. I'm going to ask you, as a longtime Steelers fan, what does it say to you that the Bengals from this division won at Baltimore a week ago, as you know, on opening Sunday, and that the Ravens have now soundly beaten the Steelers in Baltimore, 
And in Pittsburgh on opening Sunday, Brian Hoyer's Browns scored 24 second-half points to tie the game at 27, and it took a last-second field goal from Pittsburgh to survive that one. Well, obviously it tells me the Pittsburgh Steelers are in huge trouble, and it also tells me they are going to be the odd team out in this division. I still think the Bengals will win it. I think the Ravens will win a wild card. And I still think the Pittsburgh Steelers will miss the playoffs, wow. which would mean Mike Tomlin could be in some trouble. Again, he is beloved by his management and, and should be. But, but you tell me. I'll give, I'll give the floor quickly back to you. you. You tell me. If they miss the playoffs a second straight year, can he survive that? Is it a second I think he can survive mm -hmm. it. Um, there will be I mean, they, they, they will be calling for his head. Uh, I, I, wouldn't that be the third straight yeah, year? Third straight. They don't I'm make sorry, a yeah. Year? Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, but I, I think he can survive it. But I'll tell you the only reason he could, for two reasons. Number one, I'm not sure he's had the talent to work with, which should make us look at the GM and the level of talent that he's bringing him to work with. That's number one. And number two, Mike Tomlin's got a Super Bowl ring too, and two Super Bowl berths. Yep. Tom Coughlin has missed the playoffs. Four of his last five years. Yep, good point. Okay. Fair point. And, some, and, and somehow, some way, he's been able to keep his job. It's the so same. So he can keep his job. Yeah, I know. Mike Tomlin should be able to keep yeah. his. But good. I do understand. Yeah. I do understand. There's another coach who's beloved by his ownership and management. Okay. Yeah. So, again, not to pile on, but so Pittsburgh turns it over three times last night and scores a total of six points. <clears throat> and the Baltimore offense, which I'm not sure is a juggernaut led by Joe Flacco, it's not. Just think about the second half. The Ravens had the ball first and goal at the nine, first and goal at the five, and first and goal at the one. And all three times, Mr. Smith, they came away with only three points. So kudos to Pittsburgh for hanging tough. But, but my point is the final score easily could have been 34 to six. I'm being conservative here. That's how bad it got for Pittsburgh in the second half of the game. They can't run the football, and obviously we've always known that Pittsburgh can run the football. LeGarrette Blunt, who was a closer last year for the New England Patriots, and I think they miss him. He's deep in Tomlin's doghouse still after the, the preseason incident that we know, all know about. He had only three carries last night. And Ben Roethlisberger, i got to say, he's just off. It holds the ball too long. He sort of... You know, the, how many sacks? Were, I think he went down a couple times, twice. but twice. But, yeah. but they were coverage-type sacks. He's just holding, sure. holding, holding, which leads us back to your point about the GM. After Antonio Brown, how many weapons does he really have that he trusts? Maybe Heath Miller, I don't know. Wheaton had a couple of catches. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not looking at a team that I think has playoff potential. In that division, I think they run third. Unless, of course, Johnny Manziel takes over, then they could run well, last. But you never know. That's after, uh, the, that's bye after the bye week. Yes. So, I, I don't know. It was a sad night for Pittsburgh and, and for the Ravens. Again, we all thought they might be a little unfocused. This was just what the doctor ordered for the home team Ravens last night because they don't like them, some Steelers. We know that. Mm -hmm. And the Steelers just aren't very good. So the combination yeah. of that led to Baltimore having a pretty good night. Yeah. I mean, listen, I really don't have much to say, Skip. All right. Because, because it's my Steelers, <laughs> and you know how I feel about them. Well, there you go. He doesn't and have I'm much to say. And I'm pretty ticked off that they looked as bad as they look. I mean, I yeah. remember. I mean, if you're going to yes, lose, lose. Give me, give me 2017. <laughs> yep. Give me 2420. Give me something like that. All right. Uh, Skip and Stephen A. both feel as if the Steelers do not look as if they have playoff potential. Teams that start one and one at the beginning of the season have a 41% chance of making the playoffs. So 